ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Looks like owner of this ranch not very friendly toward Indians. That worries me, Tuttle. Chief Flying Cloud of the Mescaleros and the Sun White Eagle are due at Fort Carson tomorrow to sign a new peace treaty with our government. In order to get there in time, they have to cut across this whole spread. It's too big to go around. Reason for the journey well known, Kimasabi. No one have cars to stop them. No one? I hope you're right. We'd better make sure. My son, we are too exposed here, my father. They will pick us off easily. If only I could explain to them the purpose of our mission. All right, boys. You know what Miss Aggie says about redskins. The only good one's a dead one. With another Indian. We're outnumbered. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. Miss Aggie, you want to know about this? Providence has spared our lives, my son. Providence comes dressed as a masked man, I see. But I do not recognize the Indian with him. He's no member of our tribe. Welcome, my brothers. You have earned the gratitude of all the Mescaleros. They will not forget. Your chief flying cloud? And my son, White Eagle. Uh, the men who ambush you, them not know you crossed this property on mission of peace? If they did, they pretended not to. They started shooting before they asked any questions. We would not have trespassed. But if we are late for our meeting at Fort Carson, we will be accused of bad faith. You're right, Chief Flying Cloud. It's essential that you and your son continue on your way. But what about men who attack them, Kimasabi? Then maybe try again. Let's pick up their trail and see where it leads. Perhaps we can find out what lay behind this attack. Adios. Wait! Do not think me superstitious, my brothers, but perhaps you will accept this as an omen of good fortune. It may help you. This gold coin is old and rare. Where did you get it? It is one of several I used to play with as a child. My mother gave it to me before she died. She used to tell me stories about it, how each had a spell of magic to it and would protect its wearer from harm. Perhaps it will do the same for you. Thank you, White Cloud. I don't believe in superstitions. But I'll carry this coin as a gift of friendship. Friendly signs. Beware hangman's tree for Indians. I don't usually tamper with other people's property. But this is one time I think I should. Me not understand, Kimasabi, how one person can have a grudge against so many. I don't know, Tom. But I intend to find out. The person who posts that sign not know all Indians. Some good and some bad, just like white people. You're right. When a person is filled with hate, they don't reason clearly. I think you'd better turn back and let me go on. You're in greater danger here than I am. No, Kimisabi. If my people face death because owner of this property have hate for them, then we have right to learn why and try to change things. Let me ride with you. Let's go.
All tracks lead here, Kimitani. We go in? Yes, Tunnel. We must find out why those Indians were attacked on a mission of peace. But keep your eyes open. Hold it right there, or I'll put the next one right between your eyes. Now drop your guns real easy, like. Get off your horses and don't try anything funny. You saw the sign at the gate. What are you doing here? We'd like to talk to the owner of this property. Miss Aggie talks to no strangers, least of all a redskin and a masked man. You're the same men who ambushed those Indians a while back, aren't you? That's right. They were trespassing on private property, just like you're doing. That not give you right to try and kill them. Our orders are to run trespassers off this property. Yeah, especially Indians. And that's just what we aim to do as soon as I get a look at your face. I wouldn't try that if I were you. Who's going to stop me? I am. Sure, you can take this mask off me with a gun in your hand and help from those other two men. But can you do it without them? What are you getting at? I'm challenging you to a fair fight. No guns. Just the two of us with our fists. If you win, this mask comes off. But if I win, the both of us go free. We get to talk to the owner of this property. Ha! You're digging your own grave, mister. Don't you know who this is? Samson O'Hara. And they call him that because he's the strongest man in this territory. Ain't nobody ever licked him. There's a first time for everything. Mister, you made yourself a deal. No guns, just fists. And when I get through with you, you won't be fit for burial. <laughs> Watch him, boss. He's shifty. <laughs> now you got him. Break him in half. <laughs> he beat you, boss. I didn't think anybody could beat you. Now I'd like to talk to the owner of this property. You ain't talking to no one. Keep your guns on him. Is that the way you keep your word? Never mind my word. I'm going to get that mask off your face. Samson! I heard the bargain you made with him. Now you'll live up to it. He beat you fair and square. But, Miss Aggie, they were trespassing. They're the ones who saved those two Indians a while back. I know. And I hate Indians just as much as you do. But I won't have a foreman of mine going back on his word. You wanted to see me? Come in. Thank you, Mrs. Turner. I'm glad someone around here has a sense of honor. Well? This plenty fine room, Kimisabe. We've not seen many like it. You're lucky to be seeing it at all, Indian. You're the first red skin ever set foot in this house since the day I built it. And I hope you'll be the last. Now, what do you want here? Mrs. Turner, did you leave orders for your men to kill everyone who may venture on your property? Not everyone. Just Indians. Like him. Why you hate Indians so? Why shouldn't I hate them? They killed my husband and my son. What happened, Mrs. Turner? Twenty years ago, slaughtered in cold blood. I had that picture made from a tintype. My little boy was just six years old. That plenty bad thing that happened to you. Are you sure Indians do it? Sure. I'll never forget those renegade Apaches as long as I live. Or the way it happened. The three of us headed west along a wagon trail, planning to settle out here and start a new life. Me and my husband, Ben, and my little boy, Chip. Ben was just busting with excitement at all he saw. The wild, rugged country, a challenge, and a promise to anyone who could tame it. We'd make out just great here, Ben was saying. We'd find a level spread, clear it, make the land give up its wealth. And one day it would all belong to Chip. Ben was so proud of Chip. He had such big plans for him. There was a stream real close by. Ben set Chip to fill our canteen with water. And then, suddenly from out of nowhere, 
the arrow came. I don't know how many Indians there were. I just had time to see two of them. I grabbed for Ben's gun, but I was no match for them. When I came to again, my husband's dead body was lying beside me. And there was no sign of my little boy. Just his jacket, all torn and dirty. I called and called to him. But he was gone. Gone forever. I spent months and months looking for him. Finally, I gave up hope. I knew my little boy was dead. That's when I made up my mind to carry on as my husband would have done if he were here. To build a fortune that he was going to build. And to spend the rest of my life making the Redskins pay for what they had done. You suffer terrible tragedy, Mrs. Turner. You understand how you feel. But what good it do to blame all Indians for a crime of few? To me, you're all guilty. All of you. Surely your husband and son wouldn't have wanted you to spend your whole life seeking vengeance. How do you know what they would have wanted? They've been dead 20 years. That's true of your husband. But what about boy? You not have proof of his death. Indy and I prayed my heart out he'd come back alive. But you can't live on hope forever. I stopped believing in miracles years ago. You're wrong, Mrs. Turner. There's always hope. And sometimes miracles do happen. I've had enough of this. Get off my property and stay off. And the next time I catch you and your Indian friend trespassing, you won't leave here alive. And remember, don't come back. Miss Aggie. What is it? Those two Indians we tried to get rid of this morning, they're still on your property. One of the boys just saw them. You fools. You mean that after you saved their lives, you didn't have sense enough to get them off my land? It is very important them get to Fort Carson as soon as possible. You want us to go after them again, Miss Aggie? We can pick them off easy when they ride through Rock Canyon. Yes, but this time, don't bungle the job. They've had fair warning. No, Mrs. Turner. What you're ordering is murder, pure and simple. Exactly. Just what those Apaches did to my husband and my son. Two wrongs not make a right. If you take law into your own hands, you maybe get hurt worst of all. He's right, Mrs. Turner. You know what the Bible says. Those who sow the wind reap the whirlwind. I've had enough of your mealy mouth sermons. Go finish your job. But first, tie up these two. I don't want them interfering anymore. Mrs. Turner, won't you change your mind before it's too late? Certainly you don't want murder on your conscience. You worry about your conscience. I'll take care of mine. Somehow I don't believe you're as tough as you pretend to be. Anyone who loved their family as much as you did certainly can't be bad. You must have to work mighty hard to keep your hate burning so strongly. It's easy to keep my hate alive. All I have to do is to look at the things in this cabinet. Everything I could salvage from our wrecked wagon. Reminders of my little boy and what happened to him and who did it. The jacket he was wearing when they ambushed us. The canteen he was carrying. The toy soldiers he called his army. And this gold coin, one of the two he used to play with. Not much to show, is it, poor little boy? He's been dead 20 years. Mrs. Turner, that gold coin and the other ones, did you tell him stories about them? Of course. All little children like to hear stories. But did you tell him that if he always carried the gold coins with him, that they would protect him from harm? That's right. I made it up, of course, but he liked hearing it, and... How did you know I used to tell him that story? Because he told me, just this morning when I met him. When... When you met him, what are you saying? Him say your son not dead, boy still living. You're lying. Did, did he tell you his mother told him that story? That's right, when she gave him gold coins to play with. Mrs. Turner, you said you stopped believing in miracles. What do you say now? Where is he? Him one of the two Indians you send your men out to kill. No, they, they're Mescaleros. It was Apaches who attacked us. Mrs. Turner, the boy is your son. No. No, 
you're tricking me. I know you are. He's dead. You'll find a coin in my left glove. He gave it to me while he was telling me the childhood story that you told him. They're identical. Now do you believe me? Merciful heavens, I've sent them out to kill my own boy. There still may be time to stop him. And time me as fast as you can. But they have such a head start. How can you catch them? Our horses are faster than theirs. Oh, we'll do our best. Thank if you get there in time. I'll follow as quickly as I can. I sowed the wind, and I've reaped the whirlwind. Forgive me. Here they come. Get ready. Now, when I give the signal, let them have it. That is twice you have saved our lives, my brothers. We almost didn't make it this time. O'Hara! Can you hear me? I can hear you, masked man. We are shut here by Miss Aggie. She wants you to call off the ambush. <laughs> You don't expect me to believe that, do you? I'm telling you the truth, O'Hara. This Indian boy is Miss Aggie's own son. Save your breath. Ain't none of you gonna leave this canyon alive. Not you or the Indians. That story you told them about me, was it a lie? No, White Eagle. It was the truth. You have always known you were not truly of my blood, my son. Yes, my father. But when you rescued me from the Apaches, I thought my mother was dead. I saw them strike her down. Your mother, plenty strong woman. She refused to die. That's right, White Eagle. What gave her the courage to go on was the hope of finding you. Them have us pinned down here plenty good, Kimizami. If we don't get out of here, they'll be able to pick us off one by one. You two keep firing. Hold their attention. We'll circle around and get them up. <laughs> I'm going to edge over and see if I can't flush him out. Keep the business. I'd like you to meet your son. It's 
so hard to believe. All these years, I, I thought you were dead. And I thought you were dead, because I lacked faith. What do you think of Indians now, Mrs. Turner? I feel so ashamed, hating your people all these years when I should have been grateful to them for rescuing Chip from those renegades. Well, why do you, or should I call you Chip? What are you going to do now? Stay with your mother, or go on with your adopted father? I belong to them both now. I will seek to be part of both their lives. That's a good answer. Well, Tyler, our work is finished here. Adios, my friend. He gave me back my son, and I don't even know his name. His is a name which brings honor to whites and Indians alike. A name which seeks justice for all. The Lone Ranger. Thank you.